Good evening and welcome to the 2015 State of the City Address. I'm Robin Franzen Parker, Public Affairs Director for the City, and on behalf of the Mayor and the Gresham City Council, I'd like to thank you for uh, spending part of your evening here with us at this very important community event. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask everybody if you could uh, silence your cell phones. We'd appreciate that. And now I'd like to ask everyone to rise as the Gresham Police and Fire Honor Guard present the colors. And now please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you to the Police and Fire Honor Guard for your service this evening. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Council President Jerry Hinton, who will introduce Mayor Bemis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gresham's City Council Chambers and Gresham's 2015 State of the Union, State of the City Address by our Honorable Mayor Shane Bemis. Soon, 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 we'll get there. My name is Jerry Hinton, and I'm a Council President for 2015. In addition to welcoming the good citizens of Gresham, here tonight and those viewing at home, I'd like to also uh, give a special welcome to those elected officials, staff, and the members of the media here tonight. I was given about 60 seconds is all to introduce Mayor Bemis. However, to fairly introduce such an iconic and beloved figure, public figure in our community, I'm afraid I'd have to resort to an auctioneer's chant to fit it all in. And that's just not going to happen tonight, I'm afraid. That not being an option, please let me just say a few things that I hope will, at least from my perspective, underscore a bit of his leadership his work ethic, and his character. Mayor Bemis is a leader who has demonstrated a strong, clear vision for Gresham's future. Elected to the City Council in 2002, he is now serving as his, in his third term as Gresham's mayor after re-election in November 2014. Throughout his long tenure, he has brought a passion for economic development, business, and community safety at City Hall. All topics that I expect we'll be hearing more about tonight. Mayor Bemis is a businessman who understands what it takes to build a loyal following, a successful venture, a place where you want to be, ideas that you can undoubtedly be applied to business, or when, you're, when, you're, when you have his kind of vision to an entire community such as Gresham. Making Gresham great is something he pushes for every single day. 
a great drive that means long volunteer hours for him. And I'm honor honored to serve with him on the Gresham City Council and be part of the team. Mayor Bemis, as you may know, also has put Gresham on the map as, on the national level. He currently is serving as the chair of the Energy Committee for the United States Conference of Mayors. He, along with other mayors, is working to make great strides in energy efficiency at the municipal level and has spoken nationally about Gresham's sustainability and energy efficiency initiatives, including being invited by the U.S. Secretary of, en of Energy to deliver the keynote address at the Department of Energy's Clean Energy Summit. Mayor Bemis has helped make energy efficiency synonymous with Gresham for reasons that are smart, practical, and just the right thing to do. Mayor Bemis is also a husband and a father, and like me, places great importance on the very special place that children and families have in our community. During his swearing in in January, he spoke passionately about the need to faithfully perform one's duty as an elected official. And as part of that, the urgent need to create more opportunities for children and families in the Gresham community. As a member of the council, I stand shoulder to shoulder with the mayor on this priority and look forward to all the things that we can do to become, uh, to become that if we, jet, if we just propel uh, uh, this vision uh, of this extraordinary uh, uh, individual and his vision for us. And so without further ado, I give you Mayor Shane Bemis. Well, thank you very much. And for those of you standing out here, we've got some chairs. It's kind of like church. You're late. You got to come up front. So there's some right here and up here. But come on in and, and, uh, and get comfortable. Join us, please. Uh, thank you, Council President Hinton, for the introduction. Um, thank you for your service on the City Council. Uh, you have been the epitome of stability and leadership. And uh, I have certainly appreciated your heart for the community and your dedication to public service. And Quite frankly, I've also greatly enjoyed your edition of Adam Smith and Thomas Paine quotes in our council debates. This is my ninth annual address, and I feel like we have been through the good times and the bad times together. And we are finally at a point where despite some ongoing challenges, we can look forward to some good times again. We will never turn a blind eye towards the challenges we face as a growing urban community, but we also won't lose focus on the opportunity we have together to grow in all of the right ways. We'll focus on improving livability, adding community amenities to help children and families, and we'll continue to benefit from Gresham's richness in diversity, culture, and community spirit. I am incredibly fortunate to have a great team as we embark on this endeavor, starting first with my colleagues on the City Council, who have shown tremendous dedication, awesome hearts for this community, and a team dynamic that is regrettably rare in other communities in our state and nation. We don't always reach the same conclusions on issues, but we do always know that those conclusions we individually reach, even if they are different, come from pure motives and a heart that makes this community better. I'd like to ask Council President Hinton, Councilor Eccles, Stegman, French, Palmero, and McCormick, please stand and be recognized for your service to Gresham. I also want to acknowledge the support structure our council enjoys uh, in Gresham's terrific city staff. This organization is led by one of the best city managers in, in the entire country, and Eric Kavarston, our city attorney, David Riss, and all of the department directors who I know many of you have had the chance to interact with uh, over the years. You know their heart for this community, and to a person, they are all um, ready to make this place better for us. And so thank you to our staff that executes on, on the goals and the vision that we set forth. Please give them a hand. There's also a couple special people here to me that uh, have helped me throughout the years. One of them, you know him, Eric Chambers. He's now our government uh, affairs director. Also, Jessica Harper, assistant to the mayor who um, is on maternity leave. Uh, now, where is she? But here is sweet baby Benny. There she is. Now, the funny story about Jessica, she came in one day and she said, Mayor, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting. And I said, okay, well, what's the due date? She said, well, February 21st. I said, no, February 11th. She said, well, why February 11th? I said, well, because that's Gresham's birthday, of course. And any good staffer would have a baby on Gresham's birthday, right? 
I say, yeah, Mayor, okay. So it goes on and on. And then, of course, on February 10th, uh, we're sitting in the office, and, and uh, uh, Lynn Snodgrass had stopped by and was talking and said, you know, she's going to have that baby tomorrow. I said, you're crazy. I said, well, what do I know about having babies? But I said, well, it's February 11th. It's got to be. It's got to be. Sure enough, guess when that baby was born? <laughs> February the 11th. When it comes to, to those of us who serve as volunteer elected officials, as well as our staff, who also often work very long, long and hard hours away from their families, I think it's important to recognize the impact that that has on the people around us. I want to thank my family for their support and letting me dedicate time and passion to this endeavor. So thank you to my wife, Alex, my son, uh, Jacob, Derek, little Luke, my mother, Corey, and my stepfather, Jerry. Thank you for letting me do what I do and for all of your support. And finally, before we get rolling this evening, I'd also like to recognize some other prominent officials that we have with us. Uh, we have Representative, well, she's running late because they're doing some debates on the floor, but both uh, Representative Peluso and Gorsuch are scheduled uh, to make it here. Um, the First Lady of Portland, Nancy Hales, is with us. Nancy Hales, thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> Metro Council President Tom Hughes is here. Thank you, Tom. Metro Councilor Shirley Craddock is here, one of our own. <laughs> Multnomah County Sheriff Dan Staten and Multnomah County Commissioner Diane McKeel. I saw Commissioner McKeel. There she is. Okay. <laughs> former Speaker of the House Lynn Snodgrass, Sam Byer from Centennial School District, Tom Griffin, former City Councilor, Travis Stovall of the TriMet Board, Paul Working, former city councilor, Bog McDonald from the Gresham Chamber, Dr. Deborah Durr from Mount Hood Community College, uh, Jim Slochter from Gresham Barlow School District, and Linda Florence from Reynolds, and I saw Sam Byer from Centennial as well. And also with us is the chair of uh, Multnomah County, uh, Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kafori. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to take just a moment to mention a few things about Chair Kafori. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't have a horse in the chair's race during the election, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect, no matter the outcome. I also knew how much work needed to be done with our partners at Multnomah County in terms of raising awareness about poverty and social service issues that have come our direction. What I found in Chair Kafori was an exceptionally willing partner who cares deeply about these issues as we do. Her heart is in allevi alleviating poverty, helping the down and out, and giving people access to opportunities, and we're fortunate to have a strong partner. Chair Kafori, thank you for being here this evening, and thank you for your partnership. We have a couple of front burner projects with the county right now, and I'll address them later in the discussion, but I did want to recognize the overwhelming change in tone that we have experienced. I distinctly remember being with Mayor Becker on the other end of a fax machine when then Chairwoman Diane Lynn gave notice that the county intended to revoke Gresham's share of the business income tax, which represents about 10% of the revenue we use for police and fire. Had I given this speech back then, the script probably would have looked something like this. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, but thankfully those days are far behind us and I don't anticipate that we'll be needing to borrow those words anytime soon. The State of the City Address is traditionally a great opportunity to reflect over the past year, provide a general update on the world, and dream a bit about our future. We'll do all of those activities this evening, but I wanted to start by telling you a story. For a few years now, the city has been focused on making progress for at-risk youth and providing healthy and productive alternatives for their idle time. One such program is late night basketball on Friday nights, funded through a grant that the city won, won and run by our awesome partners at POIC. A couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to drop in on our Friday night basketball program, lace up the shoes and play some ball with these kids. As a cautionary tale, let me first say, for those of us in our 40s, watching basketball and playing basketball are two very different things. They wore me out, no doubt. The young people who attend this program are primarily at-risk youth, many of whom learn about the opportunity because they have had contact with our gang outreach workers. To put it simply, if they didn't have the opportunity to be playing basketball in a safe environment on Friday nights, 
it's hard to say what other opportunities might find them. As the night wore on, I was amazed by what I saw. These kids had game. I mean, they could flat out play ball. But while I was impressed by their show of talent, I was even more impressed by what I, by what I did not see. I saw no trash talking, no cursing. I saw no complaining about foul calls. I saw no disrespect. I saw no bullying. I just saw kids having fun, getting exercise, and building skills and teamwork. These kids have every reason in the world to fail. Many of them come from rough family backgrounds and face more volatility and challenges in the first 10 or 15 years of their lives than you or I might experience in a lifetime. They didn't pick their circumstances. And if we want to have a clean conscience, we absolutely must, as a community, be the purveyors of opportunity to these young people and reward their hard work. We all need to be deeply concerned of never-ending cycles of generational poverty. Schools rated out at a 1 out of a 10 showing up on Zillow, showing up in our poor neighborhoods nearly without fail, and society's complicity in letting true opportunity slip away from innocent kids. If we are going to be all in when it comes to our young people, we must be fully committed to giving kids every chance in life that we can. We must literally become a city of opportunity. It is the provision of opportunity that made our state great, and we will fail to carry the greatness forward to future generations if we let frugality, convenience, or insulation from the community cloud our notion of shared responsibility. If we fail to reach those kids playing basketball, in all of the young people in our community, if we fail to reach them and give them a true, honest, by God opportunity, if we fail to reach those kids with uncompromising commitment and they end up mired in violence, drugs, and criminal justice issues, that's on us. Unlike, thank you. Unlike many communities elsewhere in the nation, our school districts in Oregon exist separate and apart from municipal governments. School districts have their own revenue sources and a completely separate governing body. However, while we do not directly control the governance of, of schools in our area, they are perhaps the most impactful single point of service delivery when it comes to providing opportunity for our youth. That is why we partner with schools whenever possible. Our latest su successful federal COPS grant is a perfect example where we dedicated those officers to school safety and reducing truancy. I know the solutions are not easy, but school outcomes in Gresham have got to improve. If I could name one thing that could instantly enliven our neighborhoods with young families and new investment, it would be successful school outcomes and high school scores. We stand ready to partner with our counterparts in education to accomplish that. Our schools are too critical of a component of youth and community su success to not get the love and attention they deserve from all of us. And we must focus on that work post haste because time will conspire against us. In my swearing in speech earlier this year, I spoke about how quickly time passes. And he's gonna kill me for mentioning it at this time again, but when I started on the city council, my oldest boy over there was four months old. Now he's starting to shave his face. The point is, time goes incredibly fast. And yet, as, as time has rapidly ticked away, it occurs to me how easy it is to say that we can't accomplish something. There is this unfortunate belief in governance that the status quo is an acceptable fallback option. And for years, I bought it. You know the mantra. We probably can't do that right now, but hopefully someday we can. We can't build a sports park. We can't build a modern community plaza downtown. We can't build an awesome play fountain for our children. We can't build a police facility in Rockwood. We can't bring back summer recreation opportunities for our youth. The list goes on, and I didn't even start to get through the full list of items that we actually did accomplish, despite the thundering predominant illusion that we can't, and worse, that it would be irresponsible to try. We must believe in better. I said it when I took my oath this year, and I'll say it again. The mantra that we will fund amenities and programs when we can is more delusional than it is aspirational. It is not well-intentioned. It is flat. It's uninspired. It's defeatist. And worse, it's dishonest. 
Thank you. I am incredibly proud that last year alone, we have fought the allure of the status quo and we've made great advancements in productive recreational opportunities for our children. Please turn your attention to the screen for a short video highlighting some of those efforts. During the past year, the city's invested heavily in its future by providing new opportunities for Gresham boys and girls. Young people thrive in communities that value their youth, offer healthy, fun activities, and that teach positive values. No organization has a longer track record of successfully developing young people than the Boys and Girls Clubs. It's partnering with the city to bring youth services to Gresham. A capital campaign is underway to bring a new 30,000 square foot facility to Rockwood. It'll serve up to 400 youth per day and will include a full-size gym, kitchen, cafeteria, arts and music programs, a games room, and a teen center. Another proven youth program, Friends of the Children, is also bringing its services to Gresham. In partnership with the city, Friends of Children is building a new facility on the former Police Activities League site at Northeast 172nd and Gleason. Once completed, Friends of Children will be able to better serve the growing Gresham youth population through its innovative, long-term professional mentoring. For the first time in more than a decade, the city launched its own youth recreation services with its new Summer Kids in the Park program. In partnership with the Boys and Girls Clubs, Gresham Barlow and Centennial School Districts, the city dished up eight weeks of free lunch and fun for kids at Main City, Red Sunset, and Vance Parks. Through strategic use of federal grant dollars, the city created a state-of-the-art children's fountain on the Arts Plaza downtown. From the day it opened in July, the fountain was packed with happy children and families looking for free fun and a little relief from the hot summer sun. And every Friday night, the H.B. Lee Middle School gym comes alive with the squeak of sneakers and the shouts of kids calling shots. This is the city's first late night basketball program, launched in November in partnership with POIC and the Reynolds School District, with funding from the Oregon Youth Development Council's Youth and Gangs Grants. These projects and programs are truly making a difference for the children of Gresham and will have a lasting impact for years to come. Some cool stuff. They did, I did have one steal. They did not get my steal in that video, darn it. The fountain pictured in the video is a perfect example of how creativity and courage can result in immediate opportunities for our families and improved urban form in the community. <clears throat> let, me, let me tell you how it happened. Two years ago, we started the process of working hard with the federal government to qualify the fountain for community development block grant funding, which was not a small effort. Finally, we got their approval, the first time they had qualified a project like this anywhere in the nation. The results were immediate, with kids and families showing up to enjoy the amenity even before it had officially opened, and with hundreds of people activating that terrific public space downtown all summer long. In fact, I think we could have probably fired it up today with the, with the weather. But standing there at the grand opening, taking it all in, and watching those kids running around filled with activity and delight reminded me that when it comes to investing in our kids, there are no difficult choices. There are just the right things to do. You've likely heard me express my enthusiasm for two outstanding organizations mentioned in the video, Boys and Girls Club and Friends of the Children. I'm thrilled to say that both of these organizations are nearing their goals, and Friends of the Children broke ground earlier this year on their facility at the former Police Activities League site here in Gresham. By the way, Friends of the Children reached their full $5 million fundraising goal in just about 11 months, and are now raising funds to operate the facility. Friends of the Children is a robust mentoring program started by Duncan Campbell, a remarkable human being with an unbelievable story of escaping an incredibly difficult childhood, wildly succeeding in the business world, and committing his life to giving other kids the opportunities and positive influences he didn't have growing up. Let me convey a few facts about Friends of the Children. 91% of Friends students attend school regularly. 
and 83% of their program graduates achieve a high school diploma or GED, despite the fact that 60% of them have a parent who did not complete high school. 93% of friends students have avoided the juvenile justice system, despite at least 50% of them having one or more parent who has been incarcerated. 98% of friends students avoid early parenting, despite at least 85% of them having been born to a teen parent. Look, Duncan and his team at Friends of Children didn't guarantee these kids an outcome in life. They didn't set up trust funds for them. They mentored them, and they absolutely cornered the market on opportunity. You can't hear the statistics I just mentioned and not believe that those opportunities will ultimately result in outcomes, but they will do so in a way that gives those kids confidence, dignity, grit, work ethic, and pride as they become functional adults in our community. Friends of the Children is proof positive that when it comes to investing in our kids, there are no difficult choices. There are just the right things to do. When I talk about us renewing our commitment to opportunities, that is exactly where I want us to focus our attention. About a year and a half ago, we launched the Rise Advanced Dream Project, the RAD Pro Project, and asked Gresham residents to provide their aspirational, catalytic ideas for change and livability in Gresham. If you haven't been to GreshamOregon.gov slash RAD yet, I would encourage you to do so. There are some truly terrific ideas on there. The current leading vote getter being, no surprise to any of you, a community center. Well, let's consider that example for just a moment. We are a big city, 107,000 residents, and you deserve an obvious place to meet together, host birthday parties, retirement ceremonies, class reunions, community meetings, and to conduct programming for our kids and for our seniors. Other than Mount Hood Community College, we don't have a public place for our children to learn to swim, go down the water slide, exercise, recreate, and be healthy. When my kids get invited to a birthday party <clears throat> at a community center, it means we're packing up the car and we're heading to Portland. I don't have a magical solution to make a community center suddenly happen. And I'm not going to pretend that obvious problems always come with obvious solutions. But I will say that it's time to roll up our sleeves as a community and start formulating a plan of action to make it work. If we want to support our young families, it is going to require amenities, and we have great opportunities to do just that. When it comes to investing in our kids, there are no difficult choices. There are just the right things to do. My next season here at the city is focused clearly on children, families, and opportunities. And to that end, in the coming months, I will call upon the city to create a citizen commission on children and families and charge that committee with exploring ways to increase opportunities for our young people, make Gresham an even more attractive place for families, and dream a bit about services and amenities that would greatly enhance our livability. We'll also ask this commission to give us real, genuine, authentic feedback when it comes to our area schools. I know that schools are not a city service, but we need to be a part of that solution. Moms and dads, I've heard you loud and clear when it comes to your concerns about schools, and I feel those concerns in a very real way as a parent with kids in the public school system. I feel strongly that our citizens have got to be active on these issues if we hope to achieve measurable success. Let's let this commission be an outlet for that positive energy. And while we are focusing on children and families, let's not forget that a huge component to family success is the avail availability of viable opportunities for employment, family wage jobs, economic freedom. On that front, our economic development department has been hard at work, and we are constantly focusing on ways to make Gresham as competitive as possible for economic development. Last year, we spoke about our expedited industrial review timeline, guaranteeing our major traded sector industrial applicants that we can complete all of the necessary reviews in 66 days or fewer. That puts Gresham at the front of the pack when it comes to expediency in our region, and it gives us a competitive edge moving forward. But the re review timeline alone is not enough to succeed in stimulating a healthy economy. We must embark on what I like to think of as Gresham's unique competitive edge. We already swing very hard for the fences when we see major industrial investment kicking tires in our region but we have got to formalize those incentive programs and provide enough predictability that we can market our efforts on those. When traded sector companies consider an expansion, they are very likely looking on a national or international playing field. Put simply, 
In order to succeed locally, we must engage globally because there are so many different options available to them. Often, their process is to find any reason possible to exclude a city or a region. That leaves them with a very short list of remaining possibilities. And at that point, they can start parsing out more intangible qualities like quality of life, climate, culture, all of which are runaway winners for our region. Being strategically competitive requires having the right policies in place to survive those early rounds of elimination so that we can win on quality of life, workforce, and region. I also challenge our industrial landholders in Gresham to sharpen their pencils as well. Find ways to help us succeed in the competitive ar arena so that we can advance past those early pre-qualification rounds. I know this isn't easy work, but if we get it right, the real world impact will be new careers that bring economic freedom to our families. We put, we put substantial efforts into recruiting traded sector employers because a single entity could bring investment in the hundreds of millions and jobs in the thousands. But that does not mean that we lose focus on our smaller scale businesses as well. As you are likely aware, we had a good run with the city's garage to storefront program, which helped 144 new or expanding businesses fill over a quarter million square feet of previously vacant commercial space, invigorating key areas of Gresham and giving our entrepreneurs the nudge they needed to help lead us out of the recession. The formula was simple. If you wanted to bring a small business to town, we wanted to get out of your way. No fine print, no surprises. After a very successful multi-year run, we retired the program. And for the most part, we've seen businesses continue to succeed. Here's the question on my mind. If the garage to storefront program was wildly successful during our era's most painful economic recession, what could it accomplish during a comparatively stronger economic period like the one we are in at the moment? I find that question as exciting as it is intriguing, and as part of this year's Centers and Corridors Council Work Plan project, I hope to see the Garage to Storefront 2.0 bring the program back to capitalize on a period of opportunity. Further, I'd like to see the program expand to include some larger commercial spaces as well. The previous iteration capped out at 5,000 square feet per business. The problem is that we have a number of very tough spaces in Rockwood, Civic Neighborhood, and Downtown that are much larger than that and they have every bit the same impact or larger on blight and livability. Let's help those spaces be successful as well. The greatest path out of poverty is a good job, and we will continue our strong efforts to bring as many of those to town as possible, be it through traded sector industrial investment or our backbone of our small and medium-sized businesses. Our economic development efforts have been and will continue to be marked by innovation and prudent risk. Prudent, but worthwhile risk because when it comes to careers and economic freedom, Gresham has got to play the long game. But economic development is not the only arena in which innovation is at the front of our minds. For those of you that have been to a state of the city or two, you've likely heard regular updates about the progress at our wastewater treatment plant. It was only 10 years ago when that plant was the single greatest consumer of energy in our entire municipal operation. And I'm thrilled to report that after the installation of two co-generator engines, the deployment of a solar ar array, the implementation of a fog receiving st station, and a host of energy efficient upgrades at the plant, it began producing more energy than it consumes on February 12th of this year. That's good news. And because we're so good at acronyms in government, FOG, for those of you trying to think we're harnessing the FOG, it's fats, oils, and greases from restaurants and whatnot. While we haven't yet formally renamed it, the Gresham Wastewater Treatment Plant is now more appropriately referred to as the Gresham Wastewater Treatment Power Plant. The best news, not only did these improvements reduce the plant's carbon emissions and completely reverse its energy consumption, but it saves our ratepayers hard money to the tune of a projected $800,000 in 2015. That is what it looks like to respect hardworking taxpayers. Here's the awesome thing. What we did here is not a secret formula. It is rep replicable at thousands of treatment plants all over the United States of America. When we create policies and pursue programs that save energy and save money, we leave a legacy for our children who will inherit a world that is better because of our, of our creativity and our labor. And that is why being a mayor is a blast. 
While our state government is in the midst of toiling over low carbon fuel standards at this moment, we just turned our largest energy consumer into a net energy producer. There's nothing better than being able to make tangible, real world changes and see first Im firsthand the impact that they can have. Innovating with technology to save money for our residents and doing the right thing for the environment has gained Gresham national attention, including the U.S. Conference of Mayors Climate Protection Award and represents government at its best. Our strategic use of technology at the wastewater treatment plant is not the end of Gresham's efforts to innovate and provide opportunities for our residents. For over a year, the city has been working very hard to increase citizen engagement and access to our services through the creation of a mobile city hall app. And I'm very excited to public, uh, publicly unveil and launch it for the very first time tonight. So please turn your attention to the screen for a short video describing the app's functionality. What if you could report a pothole or a broken street light, ask a question, even schedule a fire station tour, all from your computer or your smartphone? Now you can. With MyGresham, City Hall is at your service. MyGresham is a new web and mobile tool that gives you the power to request non-emergency services in a whole new way. With just a few finger taps on your phone or tablet or keystrokes on your computer, you can report a safety concern or a neighborhood nuisance, giving you unprecedented access to Gresham staff. The mobile app offers even more features, such as accessing the city calendar, getting the latest Gresham news, and jumping on the city's Facebook page. Anyone can use My Gresham on a smartphone, tablet, or computer. I think that it's really cool that the city has an app that everybody can use, like any generation, and I think that it's easy and it's like pretty self-explanatory how to use. My Gresham is free and with language translation designed for everyone. We're at your service. Start using My Gresham today. Pretty cool. I gotta tell you, this app has already made my life easier. Somebody please download for my mother the complaint app. Mom, send it to the app, okay? <laughs> Rachel is here. Rachel, stand up and be recognized. She's from our Youth Advisory Council. Okay, as technology changes and adapts, it's imperative that, that we move with it. And we use it to give our residents new and easier ways to conduct their business with the city of Gresham. This app will immediately become the most comprehensive, highly functional municipal mobile application in Oregon. It is staggering to think that it was only a couple decades ago when the best way to reach City Hall were a fax machine, snail mail, or a landline. Times have certainly changed, and I'm proud of the solid staff work that it took to bring the innovation to you tonight. The app is available at greshamoregon.gov slash mygresham or on Google Play and the App Store. So creating our own app to help residents connect with other functions and services has not been our sole opportunity to grow and innovate through technology. Gresham's terrific neighborhood associations have taken quickly to the next door social media platform for neighborhoods, and we have already seen the benefits of those connections and conversations and the opportunity to bring people closer together as neighbors. Our nimble city code also helped us to show an open door to another technological advancement, the rideshare platform Uber, which offers our residents another transportation option. It is easy to, it's as easy to use as a few swipes of the smartphone. But new technology platforms are not the only places we are working to change and to adapt. We are also seeking new innovations and opportunities in some of our more traditional service areas, like street maintenance and urban renewal. It is no secret that we have funding and maintenance issues when it comes to residential streets, and there are no easy answers. A few years ago, we put together Gresham's most robust residential maintenance plan in years, and we made some progress, but much work remains. We know that fundamental services like streets are clear community priorities, and they are clear budget priorities for the City Council as well. This year, our Environmental Services Department is working hard to put together an aggressive maintenance plan, and I'm anxious to see some more progress. While we will continue to stretch resources and make progress, there is no question that our maintenance issues exceed our available dedicated transportation resources. 
When it comes to infrastructure and development, other fundamental services, another fundamental service is urban renewal. Under the leadership of Urban Renewal Director Josh Fuhrer, we are poised for action on the Catalyst site for the first time in many years. I want to be perfectly clear. We could have forced development on this site many years ago, but the development that was available during that market was not the development Rockwood deserves. So our commission made the strategic decision in this case to let some time pass, get through the recession, build some partnerships, and to aim higher. As a first step in this process, we will be transforming the portion of the old Fred Meyer site that became the Rockwood Community Office into smaller restaurant concept storefronts where we will help food entrepreneurs bring unique food concepts to the neighborhood, create, create activity and buzz, and help set the table, so to speak, for future investment and development. For the record, I just won five bucks. Nobody thought I could say food entrepreneur. <laughs> When it comes to Rockwood, our partnership with Multnomah County has been paramount. Last year, Chair Kafori, Commissioner McKeel, and I came together and jointly applied for a federal Promise Zone de designation. If designated, Promise Zones help focus the resources of the federal government onto key areas that meet specific poverty thresholds, pumping much needed new opportunities into the neighborhood. While we have not yet learned if our joint application will be successful, it became apparent to us during the application process that win or lose, our shared focus and tenacity when it comes to Rockwood would become a normal part of the way that our organizations do business together. One clear win that doesn't need to wait for the federal government is a solid partnership between our organizations. Chair Kafori, Commissioner McKeel, thank you again for your commitments to Rockwood. Now, I certainly don't want us to get ahead of ourselves, and I don't have any news to break tonight on this topic, but we have also been in conversations with the county about relocating and expanding the Rockwood Library to be a part of a larger development on the Catalyst site. The, the current facility is as loved as it is cramped for space, and we have a unique opportunity at this point in time to help swing for the fences and deliver a solid win for a neighborhood that desperately needs solid wins. I had a nice conversation with Commissioner McKeel in her office about the possibility late last year, and it was fun to think big and, and to dream a little bit with her. And I've enjoyed uh, listening here from Chair Kafori as well, and deeply value her commitment to fully research the possibility and give it a fair and honest look. I don't agree with everything that Andrew Carnegie said, but he certainly had a compelling point when he said this. It was from my own early experience that I decided there was no use to which money could be applied so productive of good to girls and boys who have good within them and ability and ambition to develop it as the founding of a public library. Again, no promises tonight. A lot of research remains ahead of us. But what a difference a solid partnership can make. You know, it's easy to say that things can't happen until we're confronted with the actual kids in the neighborhood looking for a safe and productive learning environment and the adults in the neighborhood looking for access to knowledge, new skills, or the right place and the right equipment to pursue economic freedom by filling out a job application. Our elected officials at the county care about Rockwood and sincerely want to help. And on behalf of the residents of Gresham and City Council, we want to thank you for that. Gresham's ability to succeed has always been the result of good-hearted people focusing hard on specific areas of opportunity. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Last year, under the leadership of Council President Hinton, the city launched a citywide day of service, coined Green and Clean. It was an outstanding success with more than 325 volunteers participating and making a big and immediate impact. I'm incredibly excited that it was not a one-time affair and will be occurring again very soon, this Saturday, in fact, on March 7th. So load up the city's webpage or better yet, download the app and get details on how to be involved. So thank you again, Councillor Hinton, for your leadership on the project and for the opportunity for a new generation of young people to join with positive adults and develop an ethic for public service by seeing it in action. Now, <clears throat> I want this year's green and clean to go well, Council President Clinton, or Council President Clinton. <laughs> Council President Hinton. Wow. So last year, uh, it gets better, our fearless police chief, uh, the product of sunny California, he, uh, 
he got a little boo-boo by a blackberry vine when he was out doing the green and clean. So to prevent another, we had to hear about it for six months. So to prevent <laughs> another mishap, uh, Councillor Hinton, I brought you uh, some bandages for him. We tried to get a picture of it, but it really didn't show up on the picture. <laughs> so, in addition to the green and clean, Gresham's army of volunteers were making progress all over the city all year long. Nadaka is becoming even more beautiful, seemingly, by the minute. And the folks at Suru Island and Main City Park have truly taken a former neglected treasure and returned it to the prominence that it deserves. And we anticipate that volunteer opportunities will be abundant on Hogan Butte as we continue to push forward incredibly hard to bring this jewel to our residents and seek state and regional grant funding. While I love all of Gresham Parks, I truly believe that the scenic vistas of every area mountain and the Columbia River Gorge from atop Hogan Butte will become fast favorites for Gresham residents. In addition to volunteers in our parks and natural areas, we also have volunteers creating community events like Rock the Block and Feast of Nations in Rockwood, which literally grew from an idea onto one of Gresham's most heavily attended attractions in the course of a year. Rock the Block gave people an immediate opportunity to celebrate community, diversity, and get connected with important services and opportunities. You may have noticed that the words partnership and opportunity have been used with some frequency this evening. That is not an accident. In two terms as mayor of Gresham, I have come to learn that local government does not function without partnerships and a clear focus on opportunity. Don't believe me? Just ask Damascus. I know it. And while I've come to believe the inherent truth of that statement, I also believe that there are times when we, as unique, close-knit community, have got to be honest with one another, accept some hard truths, accept some personal and community responsibility, fight the desire to blame others in futility, and consider our circumstances as they are. I also believe that the people in this room represent the element of the community that has proven a willingness to do just that. In the past decade, we have certainly seen our share of challenges with poverty and law enforcement come our way, which can feel daunting given the resources available to address them. But we will not su succeed if we let fear and denial govern our response and our strategy. We have to be nimble, we have to move with the challenges, and we have to face every new day and new challenge with fresh eyes and a willingness to do what it takes to make progress. For too long, we have had big city law enforcement issues, which we are addressing through both prevention and police work. We have made progress and continue to address these issues with innovation and partnerships, but we won't reach ultimate success if we underinvest in public safety services and hope to get lucky. I'm not going to belabor the issue, and to be clear, there's no city levy or bond measure on the May ballot that I'm trying to promote. I just want to be perfectly clear, and I want to be very honest. I will not be a leader who is content to protect the status quo when the status quo has been letting us down for decades. And when we have kids in this community who deserve options that are better than idle time, gangs, drugs, or the endless loop of video games. When Thank you. When it comes to investing in our kids, there are no difficult choices. They're just the right things to do. As long as I have the privilege of serving as mayor and as a dad in this community, I'm going to believe in better. We're going to pursue change and growth and progress at any time we see the opportunity. Although you have my promise that we will continue to be prudent and wise in pursuing those opportunities together. The city of Gresham has so much promise. We are incredibly fortunate to have outstanding employees in our police and fire departments and have leaders like Chief Jenninger and Chief Matthews who are so firmly respected and embraced by our community. Gentlemen, I'm proud of each of you, and as a member of this community, I'm enduringly thankful for your service and for the service of the men and women in both of your departments. We did not lose focus when the police, fire, and parks levy was narrowly defeated on the ballot. We made some other hard choices on revenue, and we pressed ahead. We also doubled down on innovation, 
which is our commitment no matter what. In the police department, Chief Jenninger's neighborhood enforcement team became a fast favorite for improving livability in our neighborhoods and eliminating chronic issues. This team has been doing the exact type of street level chronic nuisance work that our residents greatly value. And the council has been straightforward in labeling these types of functions as budget priorities in the future. We also know that police officers, while terrific, are not the sole solutions to law enforcement issues. Prevention and community partnerships are huge components. And, and we focused on that last May when the city convened a gang prevention and enforcement summit pulling together law enforcement, the district attorney, gang prevention officials, and our partners in the nonprofit life-changing arena. We came away from that summit with a robust discussion and a plan of action, and I'm excited about the progress we will achieve by continuing to work together. In the fire department, Chief Matthews is working hard with his team to transform the ways in which we field medical calls. If we can find a way to dedicate a roving quick response vehicle and, a, and a, to address medical calls, we have the chance to potentially enhance the quality of service our residents receive while simultaneously saving them money. We will always press ahead and do the best with what we have available. I'd like to give you one recent example involving the students who were struck by passing motorists near Centennial High School. Now we were very fortunate that it was not a fatal accident. And in the aftermath of the incident, the city and Centennial School District took immediate actions. We asked our public works department how quickly they could expedite a flashing crosswalk beacon to, bo to boost pedestrian safety at the site. Their answer was that they could get it done in eight weeks, which is wildly faster than the project would normally take. After making that pledge, staff in our operations center literally pieced together the system out of spare parts to put it together faster. And in an intriguing innovation, they powered it with a solar panel to avoid the time and headache of trying to get it connected to the power grid. So what started out as a wildly expedited eight-week project ended up taking only 10 days from start to finish. <laughs> Our operation staff was equal parts innovative and they were committed to the community and to the mission. And once again, when it comes to investing in our kids, there are no difficult choices. There are just the right things to do. In addition to a talented and devoted municipal workforce in Gresham, we have an abundance of beautiful natural vistas, protected open spaces, solid parks, great neighborhoods and urban centers, affordable houses for families, and all of the fund fundamental elements of community like Little League, hamburger feeds, armies of volunteers, active neighborhood leaders, parades, festivals, music, and art. I love what we have here. And while I look at the world through realistic eyes, I wouldn't trade what we have for Happy Valley or Hillsboro or Pittsburgh or Portland. Gresham is exactly what I want, what we all want, and we should never feel discouraged for loving our hometown and trying to make it better. Making it better is our call to action. And you have my pledge that we will forge a path, we'll find opportunities, and we will push forward in this endeavor. Just last night, right here at the end of this dais, we honored a Gresham High student named Trenton, who, starting with just a little bit of seed money, decided that he wanted to honor a veteran in our community by buying him or her a car. He raised some funds, he launched a partnership with Gresham Ford, and he got the word out, and he actually made this a reality. Trenton's team accepted nominations from the community on which veterans should be honored. And what started out as a young kid's desire to help has turned into a community rallying cry and an easier life for somebody who served this country. Trenton's aspiration to help a veteran is certainly noble. But what was particularly striking was his heart and his passion. As he stood here and spoke, it was so clear that despite every reason for young people to be jaded about the future and for serving others, he was committed to showing relentless optimism and passion. Trenton described his absolute authentic heart for service for our country, and he detailed his plans to continue in, this, in the coming years as well. Trenton's heart is the reason we show up every day, why we muster enthusiasm and hope for better days ahead, that is the Gresham we know, that is the Gresham we love, and that is the Gresham that is worth nurturing and protecting. <laughs> you know.
If you remember only one thing this evening, only one thing, please let it be this. This journey is about our children and our families, and you, you are in control. We need you, this community, to be a part of this call to action. If it is through the new Commission on Children and Families, or one of our existing Council Advisory Committees, or direct service volunteer opportunities, there are plenty of ways to serve going forward. Thank you again for trusting me last November to continue to serve our city and continue to earn your trust. It's a privilege and an honor to serve as your mayor. If I did not believe that we can find the path and marshal the resources to make real progress in Gresham, I would not have stepped forward to serve. I'm bullish about the state of our city, especially given the human infrastructure right here in this room. Thank you again for your time, your passion, your hearts, and your courage. Thank you very much. Good night and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. So again, we just want to thank you very much for being here this evening. Um, I wanted to remind you that we have refreshments out front, so if you'd like to stay and mingle, and uh, we'd love to have you stay and just have a great rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.